Woo! What's going on YouTube peoples? Back in the shed today for another shed session. Back in the shed today for another shed sessions video. Basically what I did is I did a whoopsie. I did a big whoopsie off road and I cracked my headlight. Essentially is the crux of the story here. So you can see down inside there, there's a crack on the bottom of the headlight and it's letting water and condensation in there. As you can see, it's not looking very happy at all. Basically what happened, and it's not the bull bar's fault, I'll explain why. Basically what happened, I was coming up to a ledge, a rock ledge off road. I'll even see if I can find some old footage of it. Hit the corner of the bull bar right here. There's a little bit of damage as you can see. Pretty much just came to a dead stop. The car came to a complete stop, pushed the bull bar back far enough, which is not very far at all, into the headlight down there and cracked it. Now that's probably more due to how tight of a fit I made the bull bar. So I made it nice and streamlined and tight fitting because I wanted that look, but it was probably a little bit too close and didn't allow enough flex from the bull bar when it does copper hit. So I'm going to remedy that today. But what this has done is created an opportunity for me to black out my headlights because I need to pull this lens off and try and repair it. It's probably not gonna be pretty, but I'm gonna have a crack. I'm gonna have to clean that cover because it's got some water in there and dirty off-road muddy water as you can see sitting in the bottom. It's also stopped my projector headlight from working from the condensation and water getting in there. It's either damaged the projector headlight um, or the connection or the power box that controls all of the lights in the vehicle, which I'm really hoping it's not because apparently that's expensive. We'll see how we go. But one way or another, I need to seal up this light again and I'm also, while I'm in there for both sides, I'm gonna black them out. Now, you might be saying, why not just buy the late model headlights that are already blacked out on the MP300s? And it is an option. If this goes terrible, I may do that. I may buy some replacement headlights, but they're about $1,000 each, maybe $700 to $1,000, I think, somewhere along those lines. That's very expensive, and I'm going to have a crack at fixing them first before I outlay that sort of money. Um, to replace them. That's a backup plan, essentially, if everything doesn't go to plan doing this. But if it does go to plan, there may be some other people out there on YouTube, you guys, that may want to black out your early model headlights as well. And you can follow this video on how to do it. If everything goes to plan, I can be the guinea pig. I can do it first. So um, this also opens up another opportunity because I'm going to have to remove the bull bar to get to some of the bolts on the headlights. It also means that I can move it out just a little bit to stop this from happening again. And while I'm in there, I can relocate my Rumba control box, which I have been wanting to do for a long while now, mainly to help with the airflow going into the intercooler, the front mount intercooler I put on the CRG intercooler, help with the airflow in there, also for my automatic transmission cooler and radiator, which is stacked all in there. So the more airflow I can get, the better things cool. And this has become even more of a importance for me to do it since putting on the steady headlights, uh, spotlights, I should say. So that's pretty much what we're going to be tackling today. I'm going to rip off this, uh, rip off this bull bar. Now, if you have a plastic bumper on your nav, that's fine. In my, in my um, Iron Man install, my bull bar install video, I show you how to remove the factory plastic bumper. So if you have one, don't fear, you can just watch that video. I'll chuck a link to it somewhere around this area right now that you can click on if you wanted to see how to do that. access to the headlights. Both sides now we can get to all the bolts. There's a couple of bolts that we need to undo and a few plugs. What I'm going to try and do though is to take off the bolts first so I can get to the plugs behind the headlight when I start pulling it out. So the bolts that I can see, there's two on the top up here, two up the top there, and then we've got one down the bottom. There's a little cutout in this plastic panel right there that you can get a socket into. And then there's one on the side and I think that is all of them. So there's a plug there, and there's two more at the back, and you should just be able to get these with your fingers. It's got little clips that you push down on. No, it might have to get a flat blade screwdriver. I'll be back. Okay, so sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. Flat blade screwdriver pressing down on the tab. Just like that, makes it a lot easier. Ooh. Oh, 
There's there's all the water. All the water's coming out. <laughs> One there, and one more. That's a bit easy to get to. And that's it. Yeah, so there was a lot of water in there. So I've decided to step away from the tools and let the professional take over. Ames is stepping in with her Phillips head screwdriver. So Ames is just undoing the five Phillips head screws that are holding the lens onto the headlight assembly. And then what we have to do, and this is at your own risk, I've got a box. I've got a headlight. I've got a box to put the headlight into, and then I'm gonna put a heat gun into the box or on the outside of the box facing in to use this as kind of an oven. If you have an oven at home that uh, you're allowed to use and you're allowed to put a headlight in and it's big enough to put it into, do that because it will be so much easier. Just make sure you have it on a very low setting. But basically what we're trying to achieve here is to heat up the inside of the box, heat up the headlight, and that's going to allow us to remove the lens off the headlight assembly because it's got the adhesive on there just around the outside all the way around so that's pretty much the plan i'm not sure if things are going to catch on fire or not so things are getting pretty technical we have a milwaukee heat gun i'm not sure if this is going to do the job if it doesn't do the job i have amy's trusty ghd something hair dryer on standby it's not <laughs> the best one she owns it probably is the best one she owns so we're going to try this one first we're gonna go in from the side. Amy cut a nice hole and she called it a glory hole. How could this possibly go wrong? Safety first. It's been about half an hour, 45 minutes. It's getting really warm. So the box feels warm. There's definitely hot air coming out, actually quite hot. So hopefully it started to pull away from the adhesive on that lens cover. We had to swap over to that hair dryer because the other one was battery operated and you probably saw it coming. I didn't see it coming, it ran out of batteries. Now I've got an arrangement of tools over here. I've got flat bladed screwdrivers, pry bars, just because I don't know how this is gonna go. I've also got a pair of gloves because the adhesive is probably gonna be really hot and so is the actual assembly itself. When we pointed the hot air in, it was through there and I just made sure that the hot air wasn't directed straight onto the lens or any of the electrical cables. So if you're going to do the same thing and use your girlfriend's, partner's, Expensive hair dryer for this process. I'd probably recommend to not point it directly on the lens. You can put your gloves on, bruh. I'm gonna put my gloves on, bruh. My bitch mittens. My bitch mittens. <laughs> okay, so there is a bunch of clips on the outside as well. So you kind of need to lever them out away from the lens as you're pulling the lens up. And you could probably start with some of these spots here, I guess. Well, we've got some good leverage and see how it goes. Obviously trying not to crack the plastic lens as well. It's definitely starting to lift the weight. There we go. Keep working your way around with these clips as you're lifting it up. I honestly didn't expect this to go as well as it's going so far. Pretty much these clips the whole way around the lens cover. I feel like we're almost there. Yep. Mm. Oh, and that is really sticky stuff. Look at that. And it's so warm inside the lens. Well, so at least it's gonna dry the water. It's almost dried out all the water. <laughs> so Amy's the screwdriver king, screw king, screw queen. Screw champion. Screw champ is going to undo the screws around this assembly. I'll, I'm gonna remove this one first. I'm also going to attempt to remove the one here as well. I'm not sure how to get it off, but we're gonna have a crack and also paint that while we're at it because it's just chrome and chrome sucks. Lunch is served. Lunch Ames has come through with the goods. Oh my God. Oh, famished wolf, loaded fries, burgers. Wow, so the progress on the headlight at the moment is, we've just disassembled this one here. This is off the um, top LED strip. So we're not going to paint that because it's reflective, but I still need to give it a clean down because it's had a lot of water on it. Um, the one that we actually need to get to eventually to paint is inside the lens, that one there. So it's got a couple of screws on the back of it that we need to undo to get to that one. So I was trying to get the projector housing off because I really want to paint this up black to match the other surrounds that I'm going to paint. However, you can only get to two of the three screws through the back here that's holding it down. So unfortunately, if you do want to paint this, you have to take off the whole projector 
assembly, the housing, everything, which means that it will most likely need to be readjusted again because this is on a pivot. So on the back here, there's two 10 mil bolts, these two here. You just need to undo those. And that removes the whole assembly. One more Phillips head screw. So it's three in total in the back of the housing. And that pulls away now from the main projector body. That housing there. This one's been heating up for a little bit. It's probably about time to start. Yeah, that's nice and warm. I'm gonna put some gloves on and disassemble this one as well. Okay, so that is the second headlight now pulled apart. So, so much like the first one, once the glue was nice and hot, it separated nice and easy. Probably a lot easier than I thought it was going to. So that is awesome. Now, this one didn't get any water in it like the first headlight did. So we don't have to disassemble it as far, which is great. So all of the top assembly here for the LED strip and the reflector for the indicator side, we don't have to take that out, it can stay in place. The two pieces we will be removing is the projector, assembly and the housing for the projector as well like the first one and on the lens the actual lens cover there's this panel on the inside so same as the other one i'm going to remove that using a phillips head screwdriver it's just the screws around the outside and the whole assembly comes apart okay so that is the lights completely disassembled and all of the parts out that i want to paint which is these ones here so from each light, it's two pieces. Now, what I've done is I pulled out the plastic pieces out of this surround. Now, the top one there was pretty easy. That came out pretty much after we took the screws out that was holding this into the lens cover. Now, these two on the outside, that one there, and this one here, a little bit tricky. So I had some plastic clips holding things down, which can break real easy. So I used a pick tool, this one here, basically to pry the plastic clips out of their position to remove them. Um, they, they can break really easy, so just take your time. They will eventually come out. I've also got all of my other headlight parts down here in their corresponding sides, so left and right, and I've put all of the screws and everything that I've removed in a Ziploc bag over there to try and keep it together. Completely up to you, but everything looks relatively similar, so when you go to reassemble things, if it's all mixed up, it could be a little bit confusing. Okay, so I've just finished sanding back one set of covers, and as you can see, they're looking very dull in comparison to the original chrome shiny covers that we have here. So these ones haven't been done. Now, I started off with some Scotch-Brite, wasn't really cutting the mustard, so I've got these sanding pads, fine grit sanding pads. That's a U-Pole product, and they are absolutely awesome. Um, so they're flexible, and you can really get into all of the crevices and corners with them, because the aim of the game here is to have a piece of plastic that isn't shiny as much as possible. So as you can see, there is just a couple of shiny spots. I can probably get that one even a little bit better. Um, this one came up really nice. There is a reflector down in there, so I will end up taping that up. I didn't sand that back. It's underneath that plastic panel for the indicator housing. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what you're looking to achieve, a really flat finish, nothing shiny. It doesn't matter if you do have a couple of shiny spots in the hard to reach corners, because as a product I'm about to show you soon, which will help bond the paint regardless of that. But you do want to get it as best as you possibly can. This is a little bit awkward. I said that I would show you a special product to use in case you didn't quite get all that chrome off or you just couldn't get into the edges to help the promotion of the paint. But I don't have any here. I thought that I did have a can of it, but I don't. The product is called U-Pole mm. Adhesion Promoter. It's in a spray can, rattle can, and basically mm. you just spray it over the, the piece that you're spraying and it will help the adhesion of the paint onto plastic components or chrome components. I don't have any to show you, but if you're pretty happy with the actual um, sanding job that you've done and the cleaning job that you've done, so when you give it a clean, I've just used some um, surface cleaner, prep wash basically, then you can use a product like this one here, Rust Oleum, Ultra Cover Paint and Primer. Its specialty is bonding to plastic as well. The thing with headlight surrounds is they have a lens over them. Now in a perfect world, which I'm about to live in soon, <laughs> is there's no water inside your headlights. 
So the paint that you use doesn't really have to put up with any of the elements in that respect. It only really has to put up with sun and you know UV rays and just the longevity that in that way. Now I've gone for the satin black. I don't really want a gloss finish if I can help it. I would like more of a satin finish, but if that is too flat and I don't like it, I did go and get a clear coat as well. So I can gloss it up a little bit with a nice clear coat over the top. This part isn't necessary. You don't have to clear coat the Rust-Oleum paint. You can just leave it as you paint it on. But if I need to, I have a funny feeling that might be too flat. So I will end up using this to gloss it up a bit. We'll see how we go. Okay, so I've got everything set up outside. The sun is still out. It's actually blue skies in Melbourne today. Go figure. Sun's still out though, it's only later afternoon, so I can still do this outside and there's not much wind around. If you wanted to paint this inside, that's no problems at all, but the sun will help cure the paint a little bit quicker, which will help in this instance because it is getting late. <laughs> so I've got everything laid out in some bits of cardboard. Just a quick recap, we've sanded everything back to get rid of as many shiny spots and chrome spots as possible. Cleaned everything down with some prep wash, whatever that may be. If you have an air gun, in your shed at home, it is advised to use that as well to try and get all of the dust out of the crevices in these headlights. So as much of it as possible. If not, you'll be there with a the, um, rag trying to get everything out. But yeah, use that air gun if you have one. Then we've got our paint over here. Now, if it's a colder day that you're painting on, it is advised to put the paint in some warm water so you can dump it in the sink after you put some hot water in there, leave it for a bit. It helps um, get the paint to a thinner point where it sprays out of the spray can a lot nicer and doesn't clog up. That is the first coat done. And the, probably the best bits of advice that I can give for doing the first coat is making sure that you get into the hard to reach areas first before you try and paint the nice flat surfaces. Get to the ones that you won't easily get to with a spray can because if you spray all the flat surfaces and then try and do the hard to reach ones afterwards, you're going to end up putting paint back on top of those flat surfaces as well and getting a really high build, which is exactly what you don't want. And just keep it as a dust coat. So that's it there. You can still see some of the original chrome sticking through on certain areas and that's fine. It's just got a light coat over the whole thing. Some spots are darker than others. The next coat is gonna cover things a little bit more and start looking more or less like the finished product. I'm going to leave it for about 30 minutes in between coats today because it is quite warm outside, nice and sunny. If it was a cooler day, you could leave it for an hour or longer in between coats if you wanted to, but half an hour today will do. And I'm gonna take that time in between coats to clean down all of these components, especially these lens covers, plastic pieces, which had some water sitting inside them. So I'm going to clean all of these out and I'm also going to prep this lens to repair. It's not in sight. So the bull bar sits basically here. You can't see this part. So I'm not going to go really into detail on making this look pretty, making it look presentable because you don't see it anyway. So the aim of the game for me is to fill this hole so that water does not get inside the lens after I've gone to all this work of cleaning it out, painting it and so on and so forth. So it's been just over half an hour and the parts are looking good. Definitely dry and ready for the second covering coat. So if you're pretty confident that it's dry and you just want to double check, you can just do the touch test and just make sure that your fingerprint isn't apparent in the paint, which it definitely isn't on these. They are so dry. So the sun is doing its job today, really helping out with this paint job. And uh, yeah, basically time for the second coat, the covering coat. So just try and get a nice even cover over the panel. Again, starting with the hard to reach areas first, doesn't change with any of the coats. Do those first and then do a nice coat over the top. So another bit of advice that I can give when painting is don't go too close. So if you go too close, even if you're sweeping and doing on off motion with the spray can, basically it can run the risk of getting runs because you're gonna be focusing on a spot too close. So have about 30 centimeters between you and the part that you're painting 
and that should prevent you from getting you know runs on your spray job as, as long as you're still moving around the job and also grab the part that you're painting obviously on the underside that you haven't painted and just move it around maybe 180 degrees from where you painted the last time that helps you see spots that you haven't painted or may have missed on the previous run and it actually helped me before i missed a little bit on the underside of this one so moving things around really helped me see where i needed to aim for the second coat and try and make sure i get that coverage but it's coming up really good I've cleaned up the cracked area, which is probably the worst of all of it um, for dirt and whatnot. So I've cleaned that out really thoroughly. And this is the epoxy product that I'm using. So it's basically a two part resin and hardener. Squeeze the tube, comes out. So I've got this piece of metal here that I've cleaned. Just squeeze it onto there and then mix it up. Okay, so that's the epoxy on that lens cover and it actually doesn't look too bad. We'll see how it dries. If it looks half decent, I'll be happy with that. Doesn't have to be perfect, just decent. <laughs> so while we wait for that to dry, um, these are dry. So <laughs> they're looking really good. It's time for the third coat and they're actually looking a little more glossy than I thought they would, which is really exciting because it means that I won't have to do a clear coat, which as I said before, is not necessary. It was just something that I thought I may have to do after doing a test spray on a piece of cardboard earlier, it looked very flat, but here it actually looks really glossy, especially in the sun, um, like that satin gloss, which is what I expected. And on this plastic, it looks exactly like what I wanted. So I don't even think I'll need to do a clear coat. It'll basically just be the finishing coat now, getting a nice dust cover and decent coat over the top of these panels. Okay, so these are still wet to touch at the minute, but this is a good opportunity just to pick it up from the underside and just go over the whole piece, look in all of the hard to reach areas and just make sure that you've got coverage on everywhere that you need because you don't want to put this back together and then find a spot that you haven't painted. And if you need to do another coat, that's perfectly fine. If you do a fourth coat because you've missed a spot, just let it dry as you normally would and do another coat. What have you got, Joel? I've got the covers for the projectors, but now they're black and no longer chrome. So now we have to put them on to said projector assemblies, and I just have to figure out which one was right and left. So give me a minute. <laughs> Okay, so on the back of the projector housing, if you took off this cover, if you got the projector out, then just make sure you put the plugs back in. Okay, so things are getting a little bit late in the afternoon now, and I'm trying to get the pieces of the puzzle back together for these headlights, but I had to try and fix that projector light on the driver's side headlight. I didn't know why it wasn't working. I remember when I got some water in there, it started flickering, and then it just went off altogether. So I had to try and find out where the problem was, whether it was in the projector um, LED globe or the wiring or just something like that. There was a little bit of corrosion starting in the wiring, which I cleaned out, put it all back together, plugged everything back in, and it blew a fuse in the um, main headlight relay system. So that was a pain in the ass. And I tried to try and find my way back through what might be the issue. I ended up changing or plugging the driver's side headlight into the passenger side wiring just to try and um, eliminate the wiring on the driver's side was the issue and try and isolate it to the headlight itself, which it was. So it ended up being this module here, which is usually in a metal housing, but I've just pulled it out to try and see if I can clean it. Obviously some water got in here and has fried one of the circuits on this uh, motherboard headlight module. So every time this module's plugged in, it blows a fuse. Now I swapped it with the other side, so the passenger side module, and it worked perfectly fine. A projector light came on. So it's isolated to this module itself. So all I need to do is replace that. The good news is I can put all of the headlights back together with the new painted parts, reassemble everything and put it into the vehicle because this piece can be accessed from the back in here. So I can still get in there, three Phillips head screws, 
takes that out, unplugs it from the two plugs on the back there, put it back in and it's done. So that is some good news. At least I can get my projector headlight working again. <laughs> This one goes that way. So basically what we're trying to achieve here, what Amy's doing is heating up the original glue because it has gone hard since we heated up last time. So heat it up so it gets soft and then it will mesh into the other stuff that we put in there. The other 227 flex and it'll all be soft and mushed together. Um, so yeah, what you want to do is you want to grab your Sikaflex 227, good stuff. You want to insert it using an insertion gun into this valley. Crevice? Crevice. Spot. Spot. Space. Amy is going to insert the Sika Flex in. I'm gonna go get Amy a gun now to do said Sika Flexing. Joel's lost the plot. I've got you your insertion tool for Sika Flex 227. That was a proper way to do that. Okay, so we've got Amy on a midget step. She's got her Sika Flex. I am getting a rag as she requested. And this is happening. Sika Flex it. Almost at the tip. How much do you want? Is that enough? Oh, yeah, about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's working. Things are happening. So it is finally time to put the lights back onto the nav. Now, this has been a pretty big process just to paint a set of lights, but I have to remind you guys that I did have to fix a few things along the way. However, if you are considering painting your lights, this isn't a small project. I would probably recommend to start it on a Saturday or a Friday afternoon and not have to use the car for maybe two days or at least a day and a half, you know, so you can have that you know, night time for the parts to cure properly with paint and all that. You don't have to try and piece them back together when things are still a little bit soft. Get them, you know, a full 24 hours of curing would be ideal to be honest with you. And it also means you can take a break, put your feet up for a bit and not have to spend a whole day tinkering with lights because it is kind of in intricate, especially when you're trying to remember to put everything back together. You've only got one shot to make sure that everything's done properly. You can't just go, oh, I forgot that and pull everything apart again easily anyway. It's a big job as you saw but it's going really well. So it is time to put the lights back onto the nav and then start reassembling everything else, which I'll tinker with a few other things in the background, bull bar wires and adjustment bits and pieces. But let's get the lights back on. Let's see how they look because on the ground, they look really good. I don't want to show you because I want to show you on the car. They look awesome. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Okay, so the winch solenoid box is right there. Um, <laughs> focus, focus, there it is. Right underneath the steady headlight bracket. So I've just picked up a bolt off there to mount the control box, solenoid box, just underneath it. And you can still get to the hand control straight through the bottom of the IMM bar. So everything's falling into place there. Um, there's lots of clearance. There is another bracket which run the supply, which bolts onto the side of the actual housing itself. But because I've got my intercooler there, I couldn't fit it in there. So that's fine. I just had to get uh, get a little bit fancy with the mounting, make up something, cut a few brackets, drill a few holes, and it's done. So I'll wire that one back in, and then that's the job done there. All I have to do then is align this bull bar a little bit better than last time so that it's not as close to the bottom of the headlights down in there. Bolt it all back together. So we're getting there. Limousines, really think I'm seeing things. Read the line in mid between. Yellow light, I gotta speed up. Get home to a cold shower. Need that pronto. Look, look, look like a rave at the condo. Heck of a night in Toronto. She said, Boy, you in Morocco. Pearl White mentioned in the top go. Fill up my cup with the pot, whoa. I off life in the spot, though. Running at the visa, really.
really talking to a real life Mona Lisa Pieces, pieces hanging off the fleece up So much going on, it's hard to focus on the features I got one, too many, I'm going Two, too crazy and I got three, Bad ones and they ready four, A good time, so now it's five, In the way we left that six, Can't remember anything But I know we got late, late, late.